it's a radical, you know, to not live our life based on our thoughts and emotions. It's something that we can think of and conventionally, but it will not work. <laughs> you know, we, we always, I know for myself and for so many people, people are struggling with, you know, finding relief in our thoughts and emotions, looking for well-being in the label of our thoughts and emotions, like, okay, if I'm feeling positive, if, I, if I'm feeling um, stable and open and loving, then I'm a good person, right? The, the thoughts I'm say, saying that I'm good, that I'm really nice person, or that I'm open-hearted, and, and then we feel good about ourselves. We're gonna, but then the thought is coming of, oh, I'm actually, maybe I wasn't so nice, or maybe I should have said something different, and oh, I'm not good enough. Yesterday I was, but today I'm not so good. And then again, we drop into this down of thinking that something needs to change so we can be in the up again, right? So we're trying to move from down to up, and maybe some really want to be in the down because it's kind of like, I'm depressed, I'm dark, look at me, it's like really cool as well, and you know, I wanna just like stay like that. And but inside we're struggling. We're still struggling in maintaining some kind of state of mind that is always changing. <laughs> Have you noticed that? It's like we're always changing. Our thoughts and emotions always changing. I mean, look at the last maybe a minute or 30 seconds. <laughs> thoughts and emotions cannot be grabbed. You cannot catch it and say, this is me, right? Uh, we wake up in the morning and we have great mood and then someone says something and we have a bad mood and then someone says another thing and then it's okay but I'm still moody so it's like we're basing our lives decision <laughs> and our moment to moment living on our thoughts and emotions that are always changing and that can be very confusing right and most of us, we tried so many techniques to try to get rid of this, to get rid of the sense of struggle by trying not to struggle. <laughs> really trying not to struggle or trying to be positive, trying to be in a state of mind that is um, loving, or trying to be in a state of mind that we, uh, we like to be alone. You know, we don't need anyone. We can be great on our own or trying to have a state of mind that we, we're really positive. I'm, I'm so positive, you know, I'm really positive, but innerly, innerly we feel like mm, we have some negative thoughts, we are not admitting <laughs> of them, right? We are not saying to anyone that we have negative thoughts because we are a positive person. And we need to keep it in place, right? I know I was that kind of person, trying really hard to be positive. Like my, my sister was speaking to me, my mom was talking to me, and you know, I couldn't listen so much because if she said something negative, I tried to immediately change it for her because I didn't feel comfortable in myself. And I didn't feel comfortable for her. I didn't want her to feel negative. So I tried to change her point of view to something better. Now these, these, are, these ways, are, they're not bad, <laughs> okay? But they're so limiting. They're so limiting because it's always ping-ponging from one thought to another, one emotion to another, trying to be this or that, making conclusion of this story to another story. And it's like always kind of feeling stressful about what we are feeling right now, what we are thinking right now. So it's a life that we feel a bit boxed in our ideas of what life means and what we, are well, what we are taking ourselves to be. Now when we come here to this teaching, we get direct introduction to the nature of mind. So it's so direct that better listening openly to that. It's an introduction to the nature of mind. And it's a direct access to it. And if you stop thinking, just for a moment, and recognize what remains, there is openness, alertness, the power to know, 
This is open intelligence. Our intelligence is completely open. It's vast like the sky. And thoughts are coming in right now, and emotions and sensations, and all of these things are inseparable from the vast mind that we have. Inseparable from it, like the color blue in the sky, inseparable. All thoughts, emotions, sensations, and other experiences, inseparable from our open intelligence. Our intelligence is not located here. <laughs> it's not like getting stuck here with our thoughts and emotions and sensations. It's completely open. So when we are introduced to open intelligence, we recognize what is at the basis of everything. Everything that appears and everything that not appears. <laughs> our thoughts and emotions, our cessation, they appear at the basis of everything. It's open intelligence. Now to make it into our living experience in our everyday life, you know, we are not getting stuck in this recognition of being awareness. Now we know what awareness is, what open intelligence is. Now how practically we use it in our da daily life? This is the great practice that is very profound practice of short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times until the recognition of open intelligence becomes obvious at all times. And what that means is that whatever comes up in our life, or at this moment even, we could take a short moment of relaxing body and mind, resting naturally, exactly as we are. Resting naturally and repeating this recognition. Resting naturally at the basis of everything. It's not like being somewhere when we are resting, or trying to be in the now, or trying to be in our thoughts and emotions. It's resting naturally and openly in the vast mind that we have. Letting everything be exactly as it is, flow on by, like a line drawn in water. Yeah, so you, you can see the thoughts are coming now, they come up and they stay for a while and they disappear, they dissolve. Like the flight path of a bird in the sky, it leaves no trace. And this is the nature of every thoughts and emotion. It comes, it stays for a while and then it disappears, leaves no trace. And the short moments really helps us to gain confidence in that recognition, to know that it's always present, that our fundamental nature can never go anywhere, that our open intelligence, it, it's not destroyed by our data streams. You see, whether we feel like we are so depressed, open intelligence is present. We feel so confused, we don't know what to do, we don't know what decision to make, open intelligence is present. We don't need to suddenly have open intelligence to be clear. It's already present. It's already present. We just recognize it again and again. It starts with each one of us. That's the answer. It starts with each one of us recognizing it. And then it becomes obvious that open intelligence is present at all time. And it is everyone already. It is everything already. We are not making it so. <laughs> we are not buying open intelligence and selling it to people. Open intelligence is already is. And, and to recognize it is essential. Why it is essential? Because it brings so much benefit to our life. So much benefit. When, when I did the 12 empowerments, which is the fundam foundational training of, of Balance View, it's like took me from a life base, based on our thoughts and emotions, on ups and downs, to a life of complete freedom from ups and downs. So it's not like a life of ups and downs and then a life of everything is nice and positive. It's a life where I experience complete ease and stability and openness in everyday life, in whatever I think and feel, without trying to get rid of my thoughts and emotions, like I tried so much in my life contriving myself to be someone, pretending I'm positive, you know, trying to be nice, trying to be beneficial, feeling bad that maybe people think I'm not beneficial, and trying to balance that in a way, you know, like your question was so perfect because it's always that natural motivation to be of benefit to all, that we all have it. But then sometimes we feel so bad that we have negative thoughts and emotions, right? We feel it doesn't match the experience, it doesn't match reality. 
<coughs> and we always blame ourselves. We think that something is bad about ourselves that we need to fix. So we try to purify ourselves. We try to maintain a state that doesn't really um, stay, a stick. <laughs> we try to um, yeah, really think about something else that is not what our thoughts and emotions are. And this is a constant struggle. But when we let everything be as it is, we have a complete balanced view. It's, it's a balanced view that is not like I'm balanced now and I'm trying to be balanced, so let's balance my emotions and sensations so it's, it's balanced. It's, it's, it's a natural way of being. It's, it's just exactly as you are. It's exactly as we are. You see, it doesn't need any confirmation of thoughts and emotions to be beneficial. Yeah? It's in allowing everything to be as it is that we know how to respond to each situation that will be of great benefit. And we do it moment to moment. We can have really the opposite thoughts and emotions to our actions and activities. That's what I found in this teaching. I could have self-criticism, hateful thoughts, jealousy, organs, but still my actions will be of great benefit because I take responsibility for what I think and feel. By the power of open intelligence and specifically with the 12 empowerments, we learn not to be a victim of our thoughts and emotions. You know what is to be a victim? Like thinking that you're always controlled by your thoughts and emotions. What the, the news of today, you wake up, okay, that's me. That's what I would do in my, in my day to day. And then you give up the right from the first day of the empowerments, you give up the right to be a victim of your thoughts and emotions, you restore yourself back into your beneficial power. You know that it's already present, you just recognize it again and again. The relief that is found there, it's like, wow, can I really be as I am? Can I really let all my negative thoughts be as they are? And it's frightening, you know, like we feel, really, can I do that? But then we see that moment to moment, with short moment of open intelligence repeated many times, we see that we are completely stable, that we are fine, that we can leave everything as it is and nothing is a threat. Whether people think bad thoughts about us or we think bad thoughts about other people, we can be of great benefit. It it's really doesn't matter what we think and feel, you see? It used to be matter a lot for me, what I think and feel. And now it's like every day there is the freedom in the immediacy of perception. There is a great allowance of just, wow, I can just be as I am. And the clarity that comes about with resting naturally is amazing. It's so, it's so firstly, it's like, it's a gift to know that it's natural for us, you see? <coughs> it's a gift to know that we don't need to contrive it in any way. Qualities of clarity, stability, a balanced view, they are natural qualities of open intelligence. And this is just the beginning of the 12 empowerments. Now suddenly seeing, wow, our, our life are just opening up to a life of great benefit, where we are also getting mature with ourselves. When we get into all kinds of conventional questions and, you know, thinking how it will look like and just about the short moments not being used by everyone, we take it back to our own experience and we say, okay, it works for me and I can be of great benefit to people around me, to my family, and this is how it becomes obvious to all people. Not by trying to think in how it will be obvious, by really taking responsibility moment to moment because Otherwise, we can wait in a state of hope. You know, hoping that the world will get better. You know, everything is awareness, so I better not do anything. It's all fine. So these are just extremes way of thinking, really. But once we take a short moment in time, instinctive recognition, it clicks. It clicks. We just know. We have assurance in ourselves. We gain confidence in our ability to be of great benefit to the world. And even if the world seems like too large or huge, something that we can't even comprehend of being of benefit to all, take it to ourselves. 
You know, we have a whole kind of thoughts and emotions within us that we are struggling for so many years and in each short moment we cut into the root of everything. We see that everything is pure space. It's like it was never been anything that was threatening on us. Not our ego, not our karma, <laughs> not our past, not fear of the future, not our money, not our girlfriend, not our boyfriend, anything like that. We took all these things to be something that can really affect our well-being. But once we recognize open intelligence, we see moment to moment that actually it's not the case. It wasn't true. Why did I think like that? It wasn't true. And in each short moment, we tap into the true of everything. A short moment of open intelligence is a short moment of reality as it is. Uh, if we are like um, uh, liking ourselves, not being nice, I mean, it's, we are not taking that into extreme too, right? We are resting naturally with this kind of perception of, hmm, I just love myself not being nice, so I just stay like that. In open intelligence, we are responsive, you know? It's like really responsive to what will be of most benefit. We can think something else, but we respond in a different way. Why? Because we are not limited to our thoughts and emotions, you see. It's an open intelligence, completely open, completely balanced, like being on the top of the mountain, seeing everything clearly, other than being lost in, in kind of the, the limited path that we only see. So this is the clear view of open intelligence and it's, it's completely available for us here to the training. On, on Thursday we have also a one day training introduction for those who want to deepen the practice and really get to know the written text by Candice. They're so amazing because they evoke this recognition into our own experience, not in the experience of mm, our ideas, our philosophy. We can have all of that, that's not a problem but then it comes down to our real, authentic experience of our everyday life.